Okay. Ding dong. We just, the bus just pulled into Carnation Shamron and we just arrived at your doorstep. <laughs> okay. Well, hello, everybody. And you know, this is an odd year as we are all experiencing it all over the world with social distancing and masks. Well, thank God when we're talking to each other on Zoom, we don't have to put our masks on yeah. uh, so we can actually see each other. Uh, but it really is an odd year. And I was just, you know, in the last few weeks as we were coming closer to the holidays, uh, of course, this is a very special time in the Jewish calendar. We have nearly a month of holidays, beginning with Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, which took place over two weeks ago. And now we're going to conclude the last holidays this coming Saturday. Uh, it's a very special time. It's a time of a lot of gatherings, family, friends. And of course, this year, as the uh, numbers of those uh, infected by the coronavirus uh, just climbed exponentially in recent weeks, we went into our second lockdown. So as opposed to being able to host even you know, small groups of people, we're back to you know, sticking with your nuclear family, the people that live with you, uh, maybe someone who lives nearby, uh, we have two sons and their families who live nearby, so they are stopping in and out from time to time, but we're not having big meals, we're not having company, and that, of course, is, is very unfortunate. But um, a few weeks ago, as I was looking towards Sukkot to the Feast of Tabernacles, it all of a sudden hit me that for the first time in, I believe, 22 years, I was not going to have my Christian friends in yeah. my sukkah, yeah. uh, which we've done every year. And, you know, as, as Kim just said, pretend the bus has just, you know, <laughs> pulled up to your door. We did this every year. Last year, actually, instead of meeting people in my sukkah, we did a switch. And I met them in my son's sukkah in Efrat. Yeah. Um, um, actually, he remembered that and a few days ago said to me, oh, Oh, how come you're not bringing your friends this year? <laughs> um, so we're all feeling a bit lonely. And, uh, you know, there were some friends actually who suggested that we do something like this, you know, an online Zoom kind of, you know, welcome from the Sukkah. So here we are. And I just want to say, first of all, that I do miss you all. Uh, you and so many others who I know who will be following this um, in this recorded version because it's certainly not a convenient time for everybody, but it's so good for me to see you all and and let's first of all hope that this will be the last year we do this virtually and next year yeah. indeed all of yeah. you will be in my sukkah. Yeah. Amen. 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 <laughs> right. Okay. Now the other thing I just want to, for those of you who haven't been in my sukkah or have never been in a sukkah, I want to just briefly introduce you to what it is. Um, Leviticus 23 is one of the places, but there's actually a few other places in the Bible. We have some of the, uh, details of the Feast of Tabernacles um, laid out for us. And uh, it tells us that we, shall, we should dwell in a sukkah, which is literally a booth or a hut. Uh, we should dwell in that sukkah for seven days. And the reason given in Leviticus 23 is so that we will remember for generations, and this is God speaking to us, God says that we, we shall remember for generations, that I took them out of Egypt and, and um, had them dwell in, in Sukkot, in these huts. And of course, this is a, um, this is a uh, reminder to us, and the whole holiday really is a reminder to us about uh, that experience of 40 years wandering in the desert. And, you know, if you look at my Sukkah, I'm kind of angling the, the, the camera here. Um, here we have at this side, you can see, my uh, the wall of my house and the sliding door that goes into my family room and then you see the top the top is just these bamboo mats uh, no permanent ceiling allowed it has to be um, a ceiling that can give you some shade from the sun but always have lots of spaces in there so you're really not protected if there would be a strong wind if there would be rain and you're not fully protected from the sun either uh, and then we have these walls. In our case, the walls are made from canvas. Uh, directly behind me is a wall that we bought with all these wonderful decorations on it. 
And then the rest of the walls are this striped canvas that we bought many, many years ago when we were first putting up our sukkah. Um, and on the ceiling, we have all kinds of decorations. Uh, some of them are uh, things that my grandchildren have made over the years. And some of them are decorations that we purchased. Uh, we have some lights and all kinds of things. Now, usually our sukkah is very full of people, but as you can see, it's rather empty. Uh, but I have one person sitting with me in the sukkah today, and that's my husband, Ed. So I'm just going to turn the, oh. the phone a little bit so you can hello. see him and he can say hello to everybody. Hi, go. everybody. Hi. Hello, Ed. Hello. 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 Hi. 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 Very sorry that we can't see you uh, oh. in person this year. Um, but uh, I just want to wish you all uh, a Chag uh, Sameach, and uh, we should all have the strength to find the positive in the holiday and everything that comes after. And God willing, let's get to the next year's holiday and be together. Baruch Hashem. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Um, so, anyway, so, so I was showing you the sukkah, and as you can see, um, what really features it, other than what we've decorated, is our um, temporariness of the whole thing and the fact that it's really so exposed to the elements. So if we go back to that verse in, in uh, Leviticus 23, it's the very end of the chapter. I think and this is that what I'm reflecting now is basically basic Jewish traditions and thoughts about this whole idea. Um, at the time that the Jews, the children of Israel were in the desert, they were totally, uh, they left Egypt, which is a very civilized place, to go to a place that, I mean, nobody voluntarily goes into the wilderness where there's no water and there's no, um, you, you know, there's enemies, there's bandits, there's wild animals. Um, it's a very, very precarious situation. And yet the children of Israel spent 40 years in the desert completely and totally under the protection of God. And God actually puts these two, elements as a sign of his protection the, the clouds of glory and the pillar of fire and and these are symbols of his presence uh, and of his protection and so the way i see it um and the way our tradition uh speaks of this uh, the reason we're going into this sukkah for seven days is to remind us that despite the fact that we're all living in comfortable homes with concrete or brick or wood walls and windows and doors and doors that we lock, uh, and we feel in this way that we're very protected from whatever dangers uh, surround us, that indeed, at the end of the day, we are in God's hands. And we are really only, walls and windows and doors can only offer a limited sort of protection. In some ways, it's an illusion of protection. Um, once a year, we go out into the sukkah to remember that indeed, it is only God that is our protection and to remind us of a whole generation of the children of Israel who spent their mm -hmm. daily existence with the most immediate knowledge that they were solely uh, under the protection of God. There, there was no illusion of any other protection. They were in huts, they were, <laughs> they were in the wilderness and, and their food was, was given to them as manna in a miraculous way. Their, their water was given to them in a miraculous way. And so it was easy for them to remember that they were really at the mercy and totally under God's protection. Whereas for us in our most more civilized world, we have to be reminded of this. And God wants us to remember this every single year. Uh, and I think as we're really experiencing an extremely strange year this, this year with the COVID or Corona um, epidemic and all the odd things that are coming our way, we are dealing with it the most sophisticated, wealthy countries in the world with the most advanced science, the most advanced medicine, the most advanced technology. We are so accustomed to thinking that we have found the cure for everything. Mm -hmm. um, we can solve every problem. And then this pandemic throws us for a loop. Um, a virus that initially some people said, oh, it's just a virus. Well, it's not just a virus. And it has just it, it, it really has doctors and scientists puzzled in so many ways. And I think that's one of the reasons there's so much confusion out there as to the best way to handle it, because we don't know. And if there is one message that I think I take from this whole time is that God maybe, maybe is reminding us um, 
of our own place in this universe. We don't run it. We don't control it. We don't know everything. Sometimes God has to remind us a little modesty, guys. You know, you don't know it all. And I'm going to continue throwing you for a loop. And maybe that is uh, 2020, in a way, is our Sukkah year. It's an entire year where we are in a sort of symbolic way in the Sukkah, um, not very well protected from the elements, uh, a year that is forcing us to remember that at the end of the day, we are under God's protection. Yes. Um, so that's a, a message I have for you today. I hope that resonates with you. Uh, and uh, here I am in the sukkah, but I'd like to just kind of open it up and, and hear from you if any yeah. other comments or questions. I hope. I hope. <laughs> oh, she's opening up for questions. This is fantastic. I mean, she just, we just see. Oh, now she's gone. And I'm drinking my Diet Coke because those of you who know me well know I always have <laughs> Diet Coke at hand. Uh, have my water. Mm. We're missing all the cookies. At least we don't have any calories this year, right? <laughs> no, no calories. <laughs> I tell you, usually I bake a lot before the holiday because I know I have a never ending stream of visitors, whether it's family or friends yeah. and and, you know, busloads of Christian visitors or whoever, there's always, you know, I have to put out platters of cake. I hardly baked this year because I had nobody to feed. Very depressing. Uh, so I think it was Monday. Monday, I decided that's it. And so I baked some uh, yeast dough with um, uh, pecans and cinnamon and not, uh, pecans and cinnamon mm -hmm. sugar uh, rolled Ooh. in and, and just handed like I handed some out to my sister, my brother, my two sons who are nearby, all the people who I live within a few blocks of me. I handed it out. Uh, and that was the closest I could get to feeding people. This, uh, this. <laughs> uh, now, Sandra, your mom is with you this year, though, correct? She is. She is. Oh, She's good. in resting right now. Otherwise, yeah. she would come and say hello. But no. yeah, my father passed away a few weeks ago. And so it was a very odd situation because um, we were in more, we were in mourning the Shiva, which is a week of uh, staying at home and receiving visitors uh, that ended right before Rosh Hashanah began. So right. my mother was here the whole time. We were all here together as a family um, during that week. And then the rest of my family, my, that is my sisters and my brother, we all live in the same community. So my mother just stayed on. She was going to be staying on just for Rosh Hashanah, going home and come back again for this holiday. But unfortunately, with the lockdown, she's kind of stuck here. So <laughs> she's, here, she's here until next week when the lockdown will hopefully be let up a little bit. Oh, good. Good. Uh, well, we're glad that she's there with you. And at least you have a little bit of family. Now, do your grandkids yeah, get sure. to come over at all? Okay, good. Good. Because, you know, what, what, what is a holiday without kids? Yeah, well, the ones who live here stop in and we've stopped in to them, you know, for sure. short visits, uh, but not big family meals. And of course, the kids who live further away, right we're now. not seeing at all. Oh, no. So, Sandra, this is Joyce. Hi, Joyce. Hi. So, give us some real no, insight, insight into... How your neighbors are is going in their sukkahs and is uh, you hear the singing and the rejoicing and what is actually going on at your neighbor's home or across the street or how is it all melding together? Okay, well, you normally, uh, you know, most of the people in my neighborhood are around my age. So none of us have have our younger children living at home anymore. We, our children are grown. So on the holidays, our children come back. Right. So when our children were little, you know, we all had our kids around our table and the neighbors had their children and we were doing a lot of singing and we heard each other singing. In fact, our backdoor neighbors, we would have these singing contests across the backyard, you know, and they would start a song and then we would start a song and then we made up songs um, that were making fun of the other family. And it was a lot of fun. And in recent years, we continue to do that because our kids would come home for the holidays, but now our kids are not with us. So 
it's a lot quieter singing <laughs> than usual because most of us are just, you know, a couple or maybe a couple in one child who still lives at home or something like that. And that's unfortunate what our neighborhood is like today. Um, but, and, and so it's really different this year. One of the things though, that's actually very interesting because of COVID and the lockdowns, um, our synagogues have all closed, um, but they're operating, but they're operating outdoors. Uh, and rather than have large prayer services with hundreds of people, uh, people are having smaller prayer services in clusters all over the community. So from where I sit uh, here in my sukkah, uh, in one direction, uh, down below, in the street below me, there's a prayer service. Uh, on the street where my house is in front, there's a prayer service. And if I walk on my street to the end of the street, which is about a two minute walk, that's where the synagogue is. And outside the synagogue is another prayer service. Wow. And that's just the three prayer services that are within this tiny little, um, um, you know, circle Block. where I live. Uh, but every street has a prayer service. So what you are hearing a lot during prayer times is the songs and the prayers from different parts of the community. And that's different, uh, and that's nice. And uh, yes. I have to say, there's been an enormous resilience here. You know, we all are very understanding of the need to to be careful, um, especially at our age and older. You know, we're not getting any younger, and we're at the more at risk levels for this virus. So people are very careful, want to be careful, and are very relieved that there are outdoor options for prayers. Um, so it's, I mean, nobody wants to be doing this. Everybody wants to go back indoors, you know, hundreds of people together. But I don't know, it'll probably be some months before we can go back and do that, I'm afraid. Uh, so do you think that that's time. happening all over Israel? <clears throat> yeah, the prayer services are out on the street. So, so what I'm hearing is that you guys, like, so people that normally wouldn't necessarily go into synagogue or wouldn't be for prayers or, you know, would be a little more like they're hearing prayers or they're being enveloped by this, whether they want to or not. This is great. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it really is. Actually, there was a, a woman, uh, I read her columns all the time, and she wrote um, it, that you see much more in the cities where you have apartment buildings. Because sure. what's happening is people are going out onto their porches and they're having prayer service across the porches. But of course, <laughs> you know, balconies. The balconies. Right. Sure. But of course, there's all kinds of other people on balconies right. that are necessarily, like you're saying, Kim, would not normally go to a synagogue, but they're out there and they're enjoying it and they're feeling yeah. um, enveloped Part of by it. it. They're yeah. along. You know, they don't have to make an effort to go to synagogue. They just have to open their back door. You know? <laughs> and, and, and so, yes, you're definitely <laughs> seeing. <laughs> definitely. What a wonderful time to pray for protection and provision. Yes. No question, no question. And then you feel it, you feel the need and, you know, it, it's interesting, Sukkot is a holiday where scripture says you should be rejoice in this holiday. Uh, and it's one of the holidays where this idea of rejoicing is focused on. Um, and, you know, so there is this idea that we're rejoicing in the holiday, even though we're living in such a complicated time and there are people who are ill and people who are frightened about being ill. And of course the distancing, which is depressing. Um, I don't know, but there's something eternal in these festivals that even though we're in strange conditions, we are rejoicing. And, you know, thank God, I have to say, um, we have our health, thank God. So every one of us uh, rejoices in that as well. You know, we have not been affected by this directly. And so that's something to thank God for and to rejoice in as well. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So, so Sandra, are you, do you have rules about how many people can join together, even if you meet outside? Yes, we can't have more than 20 people in a given area outside. Uh, and you have to keep a distance of two meters between every, each person and wear masks. Um, but in some places, if we have like two different sections, like for example, our outside our synagogue is a huge area. And in any case, we traditionally men and women pray separately. Um, so they just put this like um, barrier down the middle 
as a divider, so to speak. And so you can have 20 men on one side and 20 women on the other side. Um, oh. But, you know, but people, again, it's not, it's not that big an issue because there are prayer services on every street corner. So, you know, all these people that normally would have come to the synagogue, every, most people are just going to the prayer service that is closer to them. And, you know, for us, the synagogue is on our street. So it's also convenient, but also we have this sort of feeling that if we can join the official, so to speak, synagogue service, we do at least for the morning prayers on the Sabbath. Um, the afternoon and evening prayers, uh, we more often join by just going outside our front door and joining the one on that street. It, it's odd. I mean, you know, like during on Sabbath and holidays, there's no cars going by, so it's very quiet. But we have we have prayer services three times a day all the time. So like at six o'clock, actually in just more than half an hour, there's going to be a prayer service just outside and and there's cars going by. So we have people on one side of the sidewalk and people on the other side of the sidewalk and someone leading the prayers. But every time a car goes by, you have trouble hearing what he's saying. But we're all reading the same prayers. We know what to say. So even if you don't hear the guy, you know what you're praying. Uh, so it works. But it's, it's a bizarre situation. <laughs> well, Sandra, yeah. what are some of the scriptures that you read during the Sukkot and then for Simchat Torah? What are some of the scriptures that are Ecclesiastes, do you read it from and the uh, Haleo? What are okay, some of those? so a number of different things. First of all, our prayers, our ordinary prayers on Sabbath and on holiday always include um, Psalms, the Hallelujah Psalms. We read yeah. every every day, actually. Um, we read the Hallel every day on the holidays, and that is additional uh, prayers. Um, that's, I what believe it starts with 113. Psalm 113 through 118, um, we read that, and um, Ecclesiastes definitely is read on the Sabbath of Sukkot, and this year that turned out to be a few days ago, that was the, the first day of the holiday was on Sabbath, and we read Ecclesiastes. Um, many people have questioned, you know, this is such a happy holiday, why are we reading such a depressing book? Right. Um, That's my question. It's a very depressing book. But, you know, to me, I, I know, and, and a lot of people connect it with this same idea of vulnerability that we remind ourselves, you know, the vulnerability that is very much in Ecclesiastes. Man is vulnerable. Man, how much can he really accomplish? Uh, you know, are his accomplishments, do they last? Uh, these are some of the, uh, the questions that Ecclesiastes is, is, uh, is exploring. Uh, so that kind of is in sync with the vulnerability of the sukkah and the message, because what's the last, the last verses of Ecclesiastes at the end, you okay. know, um, uh, what's, what's the conclusion at the end, fear God and, okay. and, and obey his commandments, right. because that's what man is all about. Yes. Okay. That's what our mission in, in life is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that kind of, um, is part of the message of Sukkot. You know, yes, we're vulnerable. Yes, uh, life is a shack with a, you know, um, <laughs> a loose, <laughs> kind of, you know, a bamboo mat for a roof. But, um, you know, God is there. And if we fear God and if we obey his commandments, then that's what we need to, to worry about. Um, wow. So that's really the message. That's, that's the message of Ecclesiastes that we read. We also read the scriptures or some of the scriptures, for example, we read in the Torah reading uh, from Leviticus 23, which talks about not just the holiday of Sukkot, it ends with the holiday of Sukkot, but we read the whole uh, chapter that has all the different holidays. Uh, and they're part of our prayers include also um, other uh, in numbers, for example, I can't remember exactly the chapter, but uh, 20 something, um, where it has the different sacrifices you, re you bring on each holiday. So one of the things we pray uh, during the Feast of Tabernacles is each day of the feast, we pray, we recite the, the actual sacrifice that is supposed to have been brought for that day during temple times. So these are just some of the things that, that we read and, and pray uh, during this holiday. So you, do you have a, a book? Like while you're doing this at home, you know, do you have a book like you do for Passover, the Seder, or do you, what, what do you go by? I mean, you have okay, a Okay, so first of all, the, the standard prayer book 
has all the prayers for every day and for regular Shabbat, has a lot of the prayers for the holidays as well. You kind of have to flip the pages around a bit, but it's, it, right. most of it is there. But they also put out separate prayer books for each holiday. If you want to just have one prayer book, that you don't have to flip around the pages and you just go in order and it's all written there for you as well, including the scriptures that are being read. So, um, so it's there, you know, it's all there. But we all know what, we don't know them all by heart, but we know what it needs to be done. So, you know, there it is. And these, I, one thing I want to make sure you understand, these, these uh, street services all have a Torah scroll. All the synagogues have multiple Torah scrolls wow. and they've all been given out wow. so that each, wow. each prayer service has a Torah scroll. And wow. our local religious council is uh, making sure that wherever they can, they're making sure there's an available Torah scroll somewhere. It's there for a street service. So, you know, there are some people who own Torah scrolls and they're making it available and everybody got a Torah scroll. So we're reading the Torah the way we always do. So I want to make sure table, on... you know, typically a folding table in the middle of the street with a tablecloth on top of it. You know, mm. we don't have an R. <laughs> okay. You know, right. But, <laughs> I would say, how do they protect the Torah scroll while they're out there in the middle of the street? I mean, clearly it's only out there for a few minutes, but I mean, still. Well, it's out there for the time of the reading. Let's say that right. might be uh, 15 minutes or something. And the sure. rest of the time, it, it, each Torah scroll is in someone's home. Okay. You know, in a place where it can be very well protected. It, it needs to sure. be covered out of respect. It's right. usually wrapped in a, in a talit or in a tablecloth or something nice, you know, yeah. um, and, and put in a place that's safe. Yeah. Because. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because. <laughs> at, at, at 20 grand a Torah scroll, we don't drop them on the ground. We, we take very good care of them. <laughs> Well, we don't drop them on the ground because we're respecting in, God's word regarding yes, of its, of its yeah, uh, yeah. financial worth. But yes, they are, do cost a lot of money these days. Well, what about for Simchat Torah? Will they have the march in the streets or will they, oh, they have anything? Do you that have is a any huge question. I'm telling you, it's Wednesday. Simchat Torah is Friday night. We have no idea. No we one. have no idea. I know the <laughs> rabbi just put out something like about an hour ago, but I haven't read it yet. Um, look, we can't dance. I mean, you can dance, but you can't hold hands and you can't be close to one another. So that effectively mm. means you're not dancing. You can't breathe. Um, you can't sing and breathe around people. Well, no, so. we can sing. We have masks on. We have, there's no problem singing as long as you have oh, your good. masks on. Good. Good. We can't. So We're not well, it's going to be very abbreviated. Also, it is hot in Israel. This has right. been the major challenge. Like, for example, oh. on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, when the when the services are usually hours long, the services were abbreviated and we also started at six in the morning uh, because, you know, you do not so want to be outside after That's 10 o'clock or 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning. It's too mm. hot, Yes, you know, mm. in the sun. And we put Especially up- Especially um, when you're fasting on Yom Kippur. Oh yeah. Uh, Yom Kippur, we started really early and we were finished. We had also people put up these like shade things all over the town, wherever there were these services, and the mayor sent all the local maintenance workers all over helping people put up these shades uh, uh, to make it easier. And we put some up in front of the synagogue, you know, where we're praying, and that wasn't enough. So just a couple days ago, um, we had an old cover that we didn't need anymore. Ed went and together with another couple guys put up an additional thing of shade so it would cover more of the expanse. So, you know, nobody wants to be out there too long. And also there's problems passing around the Torah scroll. This right. is considered not a good idea. So one person will hold it. And, mm. you know, and there's going to be a very minor dance. It's going to be a little singing, a very yeah. minor dancing, if at all, more, more just kind of swaying in place to the music, you know, to the songs. <laughs> it's not going to be the normal thing. It just won't be. But do you have recordings? Or oh. is, do they actually have yeah. recordings out there? Or yeah, or no, because on the Shabbat and on the holidays, we don't use any electricity and we don't use musical instruments. So it's only a cappella singing. Uh. I'm trying to figure out who that is so I can mute him. I have no idea. 
kyppis. Yes, Marita Rauti on Anyway, so that's how we're doing it this year, and uh, it's been a challenge, but um, a holiday is still a holiday. Yes, yes, it is. Okay. Anyway, it's been so wonderful to see you all, and I want to thank you all for joining. Thank you, Kim, for helping to make this happen. I want to wish you all a wonderful holiday. Those of you who mark the Feast of Tabernacles in some way, if not, I'll just say Chag Sameach, Happy Holidays from here in Israel, from me, from my family, from here in my sukkah, to all of you from all over the world. Chag Sameach, Sandra. Bye-bye. Chag Sameach. So good to see everyone. Hug Kim. Hug Thank you. Hug Samayak. Hello, Stuart. So good to see all of you. Okay, Kim, can I ask you something? Can you send me the recording of it? Because I would like to show it here in Toronto. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep, I will. As soon as we get done, it'll pull down on my computer. Hopefully later this afternoon. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. Kim. Yes, Bryn, how are you? So good. Hello, Bryn. Hello, I Phil. Went, I went looking for people there. I was looking through all the people. <laughs> I know, it's so great. Yeah. So good to see all of you. Very all. nice. Good. Good. It's a beautiful group. I was very impressed to hear their question and their uh, comments. Very nice. Beautiful. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. Gosh, that was fun. Not quite as fun as actually being there in person, but uh, oh, sure. yeah, that's the best. Good. what can we do? What can we do? Yeah. It was cheaper. We didn't have to buy a air, uh, ticket. All right. <laughs> we, were, we were blessed to be uh, in Sandra Suka in 2014. So right. uh, we have experienced it in person. So we are uh, mm. blessed to be part of, uh, of this time. It, it does make it easier to like imagine it when you when you've actually been there for yeah. sure. Yeah, if if travel is allowed again uh, by March 2021, we're expecting to have a group there that Sandra is going to help us with. So uh, we'll keep That's our fingers fantastic. crossed and pray that uh, it'll work. Yes. <laughs> you have more faith than I do. Oh, I have yes. to tell you. <laughs> I, 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 uh, we met too. Hey, Kim, Sandra. Hey, you guys. Uh, I'm just getting on. This is Tommy Waller. And, hey, Tommy. Uh, just yeah, I think Sandra's actually hi. gone. Hey, Tommy. Glad he you joined gone. us. Yeah, yeah. I, I was on another call. I had another Zoom call. and so, But I just wanted to say hello to everybody. I hope you're yes. enjoying our, our little programs we're putting on. Uh, so I'm enjoying uh, are, being with Kim and Sandra. Oh, many in Israel. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a what a what a blessing, you guys. I hated I hated that I couldn't get on, but I had a very important uh, Zoom call that I had to be on. So, but I know that. Um, right. oh. Just wanted to say well, hello. Next time I'll double. Hi. Next time I'll double check with your uh, schedule. You know, before I. No, well, you. this was a this went <laughs> long. It was not uh, uh, not not, not planned. So no worries. Uh, but anyway, no I wanted to jump on anyway and, and yeah, be encouraged. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah, well, I think oh. everybody has been loving the programs, and uh, we gotten a lot of feedback. So, Haksamayak, oh, Tommy. So is it? So it's hot. Haksamayak, Haksamayak to everybody. Yeah. So uh, your volunteers are out there like working like I can't even imagine. Only how many how many volunteers do you normally have this time of year in the country? Uh, you know, we we usually have uh, anywhere probably three three hundred or so plus volunteers but at um, one time you know at one at one right. time you know we have oh, so on uh, uh, 70 100 people um, and you're, so we've got about 70 people here right now oh you do so, have 70 okay but yeah. still like they're doing the work of 300 people oh yeah yeah we're and they're here for a lot longer time 
So Ooh. that that's really working out. And we and we have we've crossed the uh, three hundred thousand pounds of grapes. There's going to be, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, where there's going to be a, a wine drunk at the feast, you know, yes. uh, in the future in the Messianic Kingdom. So we, we're looking forward to that. So uh, excited <laughs> about that. So, but yeah, I just wanted to hop on real quick and say hello to everybody. I thought maybe you'd go a little bit longer. I didn't think you'd be, you'd be cutting it off, you know, so soon. Oh, well, Sandra had prayer service she had to get to. So she she, had, oh, okay. she was on a limit. So. Right. Um, yeah. Well, I'd love to meet. When you come to Israel, make sure that uh, Sandra brings you by our place. And uh, Kim, you guys, you got to come see us. And uh, maybe, maybe we'll have some work for you to do. Yeah, to put, put you to work, <laughs> you know, you can't just be on Zoom calls all the time. You got to get to work, you know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so. oh, all right. Man. Hawks and Mac, everybody. Hope you're having a great feast oh, and, and uh, hope mm -hmm. I see you soon in Israel. All right. All right. Yes. Bye, bye bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. bye. Thank you, Kim. Bye, Thank you for organizing. Oh. Thank you're you, Kim. You're welcome. Bye, Thank Kim. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Kim. Thank bye. you, Kim. Bye, Kim. Oh, thank you, Joy. Bye -bye. <laughs> so good to see you guys. Hey, Cookie. Joyce. Bye. Bye. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Bye.